Pretty much every time my heart beats, I'm getting these pains. Those are the words of 26-year-old David Nash on the phone to a nurse at his GP surgery in Leeds hours before he was taken to hospital in an ambulance. Two days later, he was dead. Not being able to get a face-to-face -face appointment with your GP is something both main Westminster parties have sought to address recently. Over the last few months, we have been investigating on this programme various parts of the NHS and how the system across the board is by any measure in crisis. And now the Royal College of GPs has told us that general practice is in its most parlous state for 30 years, with more and more of them likely to leave the profession in the near future. Our chief correspondent David Grossman and producer Sean Clare have this exclusive investigation into the death of law student David Nash. And how are you feeling in yourself? Uh, scared. I'm worried, I'm worried it, it could be cancer. Did he want to see a doctor face to face? He, he, he did. Uh, he was very concerned about his neck lump. Not always being able to see a GP face to face is an all too common frustration at the moment. But in the case of musician and law student David Nash, his family believe it cost him his life. Are you worried about it still? I'm so worried. David didn't have cancer, he had an ear infection. He was otherwise a fit and healthy 26 year old. I've, I've, I'd say I've just been eating a little less, just because okay. I'm scared. David's symptoms got progressively worse. Despite three more telephone consultations with his GP surgery, three weeks later, he'd be dead. He was six foot seven. <laughs> and when he walked in the room, he made an entrance. He's one of the funniest people I know. Not only was he very humorous and a very funny son and brother and a good son, he believed in equality for all. He totally trusted the NHS. Yeah, he, he was just a really, uh, really good guy. Over the course of 20 days in October and November of 2020, David would have four telephone consultations with four different clinicians at his GP practice. Newsnight has obtained audio recordings of each of those consultations. David's parents, Anne and Andrew, have given us permission to broadcast excerpts in the hope that doing so will help prevent this sort of tragedy happening to another family. There's, there's, a, there's another one that I think could be a long time, I'm not sure. OK, now in terms of... Um, David first rang for an appointment and sent in a photo on the 14th of October 2020 when he discovered lumps on his neck. Unable to determine the cause, the doctor ordered a blood test for 19 days later. But by the 22nd of October, David has pain in his ear on the same side as the neck lumps. He has a second phone consultation with the practice nurse the following day. Quite painful, like on the outer ear, kind of near the jaw area as well. Uh, feel quite blocked. Over the phone, the nurse practitioner gets David to examine himself. Behind our ear, on our actual head, on the skull, um, we've got like um, a nice smooth bit of skin before your hairline starts. Yeah. Can you just press over there and just make sure it's not swollen or tender, please? Behind it's a short call, and within five minutes, the nurse prescribes treatment for an outer ear infection, which yeah. David didn't have. There was no evidence mm. that would support that. And, and had he been seen, um, I would suspect if you present with an ear infection, the clinician would look in your ear. Uh, no, it's all right. I feel like I'm on the phone to you all the time, so I've, I've, I feel very to... A few days later, David has another phone consultation, this time with a doctor. He's developed new worrying symptoms, but still he's not offered a face-to-face -face appointment. I started getting a temperature over the weekend. This morning when I got up, there was some blood in my urine. Right. So can, can you the GP suspects he has a urinary tract infection, despite David showing none of the other usual symptoms. I mean, there is a possibility this is a urine infection. 
uh, although you don't seem to have any other signs of a urine infection. Each clinician David spoke to, it was though it was the, the first consultation. Uh, it was that. treated as yeah, a standalone separate, consultation, yeah. and very little In regard was given to um, the fact that this was, you know, the fourth time, and mm. and that only days earlier he was mm. passing blood. By the fourth phone consultation, which happened 19 days after David first called the practice, the untreated infection in his middle ear has now spread to his brain. He's in extreme pain, he can't eat, he's disorientated, and as we can hear from the recording of his final consultation with a nurse practitioner, he is slurring his words. Still, he's not seen in person. I've got pain behind both eyes, my sinuses, my back and my neck, and I've got temperature as well. Sorry, the, the line's not very good. I'm struggling to hear sinuses. Uh, sinuses in the back of the neck, so like the cheek area and the back of the neck. Back, back of your neck? You don't have sinuses in the back of your neck usually? No, the, the, the pain is in the... Oh, the pain. I see what you mean. Right, OK. Despite this being David's fourth consultation, he was still not offered a face-to-face -face appointment or even a video call. The nurse seems unaware of everything that David has told clinicians at the practice over the past 19 days. Do you think you've done anything? So you've not been in a, a bit of a bump in a car or you've not been doing lots and lots of computer work or any exercises that might have wrenched your neck or anything? No, I've not done anything for that week. No, nothing like uh, that. Not, uh, nothing, nothing memorable before. Um. Yeah, yeah, OK. Um, you're sounding like you're feeling a bit sorry for yourself. Are you feeling a bit rotten? Uh, just, I'm just not sleeping with it, and I'm, I'm not... Yeah, I'm just not myself with it. Yeah, not sleeping very well. Are you eating? Uh, yes, I don't eat too much. Yet again, it just hurts to get up and do stuff with it. There was still a chance that someone at the practice would see just how ill David has become. In a little over an hour's time from this call taking place, he has a blood test booked, the one organised nearly three weeks previously. I think you've got an appointment for the surgery, haven't you? Yeah, some blood. Yeah, yeah and I know you've had a negative COVID <sighs> test, but with you having a temperature, I, don't, I think you should rearrange that, to be honest, because... There are some times when a negative test can actually be positive and it's just not picked it up. David is clearly anxious that delaying the blood test will further delay finding out what's wrong with him. That blood test has like already waited two and a half weeks for it and it's like quite it's something that's playing on my mind a lot and I have to wait another two and a half weeks for it. Newsnight understands that NHS England, which investigated David's care, has concluded that, while he could have been seen face to face at any point, there was a clinical rationale for not seeing him until the fourth call. They judged that that call was not satisfactory and a face to face consultation should have been organised. All right, David. All right. Bye. All right, let's take care. Bye bye. 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 Two and a half hours after that call, David took a selfie of himself. To, to a friend, to send to a friend, didn't he? Which yeah. is the last picture. I have no formal medical training other than first aid. Mm, um, but but, but, but if, I, if I was to identify a picture of someone who was dying. A few hours after the call, David was taken to hospital in an ambulance, but died two days later. His GP practice extended their condolences to David's family, but said they wouldn't comment until after the inquest into his death concludes. I think it's been appalling care. I think they've completely let David down at every single point. And I am absolutely convinced of David's mum that if he'd been seen on that last consultation, he would still be with us today. Two-tier system, whereby patient, patients who shout loudest, who have the sharpest elbows, get seen and we don't get time to spend with our sick elderly patients, those with cancers or those people who don't shout loud. Can you remember when that picture was taken? For David Nash's parents, there's also a concern that for people like their son who are young and look reasonably healthy, well, they'll get overlooked. David died from a condition that you'd expect to see happen in the third world. Mm. You know, people living in the middle of nowhere with no access to medical treatment.
The only thing we really want is that this doesn't happen to another family, which you hear, I'm sure, time and time again, but it keeps happening. An inquest into David Nash's death is scheduled for the new year. The fact that he was never seen face to face by his GP practice will be something the coroner will consider. Many believe a wider inquiry into GP care is long overdue. David Grossman in a film produced by Sean Clare. We asked the government and NHS England for an interview. No one was available.